Hey team, Kat here. I hope you are doing amazingly awesome at this time of year. Welcome. In this session, I'm going to be sharing with you the ultimate end of year review. And if you're here live, I would love this to be an interactive session because this is all about us celebrating you and looking back at the year that was uh, before you go into your plans for for next year. So welcome those of you who are here live. Can you just pop a live if you are here live? And if you're catching this on the replay, just pop, a, pop the word replay. Uh, always love seeing who's here joining us. And please um, use the comments tonight. I really want this to be a session where you can post in the comments and share your wins. And so we can all celebrate with you. And I will jump back, back in the comments once this is finished and I will reply to you all. So uh, I'm just going to keep sharing but if you can utilize that, that comments would really, really appreciate it. So let's dive in. So in this session, I'm going to walk you through the ultimate end of year review. I know a lot of you are starting to think about next year and what you want to achieve next year. And I am too. And this is about um, before we look forward, let's stop and look back. Let's really stop and pause and look back at the year that was because there are some juicy lessons in this year. Some of you, you know the lessons really clearly. Some of us, we've been so in the doing that this is a time to like pop your head out before things get even busier and to just stop and, and just acknowledge, acknowledge you, acknowledge the things that you've done, the things that you're grateful for, the things that you're proud of. And I'm going to walk you through that process. And um, what we can do if we don't do this, if we don't take the lessons, is that we can kind of just keep moving forward without really squeezing the life out of these juicy lessons and um, all the wisdom that this year has has taught us. So I created a tool for this. It's a worksheet. If you would like a copy of the worksheet, if you could just put uh, the word review. Uh, actually, put the word worksheet. If you can pop the word worksheet into the comments right now, I will make sure that I get um, that my team gets that that worksheet to you uh, as soon as possible. So just pop the word worksheet if you would like to go through this process. So what we're going to cover in the session is this tool to help you maximize your lessons from 2022. We're going to go through my signature uh, reframe statement that really helps you to compassionately release the past and forgive yourself for anything that you didn't get done. And I'm also going to go through nine questions that are going to prompt your valuable uh, reflections and help you to really focus on what you want to take from the previous year into the next year and what you want to leave behind. So let's get stuck in. Firstly, I want to congratulate you on all that you have been and done this year. Uh, we just did a toast in my inner circle community. We just all raised our glass. I did have a nice glass of sparkling uh, water over there, but I'm going to raise my glass to you and just congratulate you and acknowledge you for everything that you've achieved, everything that you've um, that you've done and who you have been, who you've shown up as this year for yourself and for the people around you. No matter how much you've achieved or how much you haven't achieved, there is always, always so much to be grateful for and so much to celebrate and feel really good about. So before we dive in uh, to the nine questions, we're going to have a look at this reframe statement because sometimes we need to acknowledge some feelings, any feelings of regret of everything that we didn't achieve this year anything that happened that we kind of wish hasn't happened, anything we've done, any mistakes we've made, any failures, um, to really acknowledge them with kindness, any disappointment. Because if we don't, if we just shove it all down and try to just, you know, focus on the good, like I'm all about focusing on the good. I'm, you know, such an optimist, always positive um, and focusing on the things of going forward and keeping my eyes fixed on what's going well. Uh, but also we can't shy away from our emotions. We were, a lot of us were in tears um, in the last session in my inner circle because we were just acknowledging, you know, there were tears of joy, but also it's been tough. It's been really tough for a lot of us. And a lot of us have struggled and pushed through some hard, hard things this year. And sometimes we can end the year and just kind of be like, oh, I didn't get that done. And we think back to the goals we set at the beginning of the year. And most likely, majority of us have not completed them. That's just the reality of it. It's just 
There are a lot of things left undone. There are things left unsaid. There are things uncreated. <laughs> um, there are many challenging circumstances and imperfections. And that is perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. And not only okay, it's, it's a beautiful part of life to acknowledge the light and the shade, to acknowledge it all. The important thing is to take wisdom from it and then let it go and move on into being and doing everything that we desire. So one way that I help my clients with this is by creating a reframe statement. So think about something that maybe you've got regret about, um, a challenge that you've had, a disappointment or a failure, and write down uh, this statement. Even though circumstance, I choose response. So even though I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve, for me personally, it was uh, I wanted to have more spaciousness, more margin, more uh, putting my body over my business, but I didn't do it. I didn't quite crack it. And I have a feeling a little bit of regret and a bit of sadness around it. Just like, oh, cat, you really, really worked hard. And uh, that's that's cool, but you, you just didn't quite get that balance that you were going for. So even though I feel regret and disappointment over that, I choose to focus forward and taking those lessons into next year. Um, so that is the first part of it. Now we're going to dive into the nine nine questions and I'm just going to give you some examples but if you would um, if you'd like to pop it in the comments we would love to hear uh, and acknowledge this with you so the first question is who are you proud of being this year pop it in the comments who are you proud of being this year any thoughts or words that come to mind just pop it in the chat box for me, I am really proud of being vulnerable. I've really learned the strength and vulnerability and to just speak up when I don't always get it right and I, I make mistakes and, and things are messy behind the scenes at times with my team, with my friends, with my clients, you know, just being able to be vulnerable and be real and say, hey, um, I don't always get it right. I, I stuff up. Um, and just being able to share vulnerably some of the hard things, the things that I struggle with. I'm proud of myself for being brave, for taking brave action, for speaking up, for putting in boundaries, for saying yes um, to the things that are important to me, saying no to the things that aren't aligned. I really stepped up in my boundaries this year. I'm really proud of myself for being focused, really focused on producing great results and really looking after my clients. Um, the, the community that I work with, the, the clients that I work with, we're just flooding the chat tonight with so much gold, so much love for each other. And um, I was speaking words of life and encouragement over them. <laughs> Some of you are here. And, uh, and then they did it to me. And, and, and I was quite emotional at just, they were just saying, um, you know, the support that I've given. And I'm, yeah, I am proud of of that, of, of doing what it takes to look after people. It's a high, really high value of mine. So I'd love to hear what you're proud of, of being, who you're proud of being, sorry. Uh, number two is what challenges are you proud of overcoming? What challenges are you proud of overcoming? Pop it in the chat box if you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, pop it in the chat box. What challenges are you proud of overcoming? For me, uh, I'm really proud of overcoming my resistance to delegate and outsource. Like I, I always know that that's the right thing to do, uh, but there's, there's levels and layers, right, <laughs> of everything. So I really stepped into a new level of delegating and outsourcing and trusting other people uh, to do a great job. Uh, so there's four team members now in my business, which is so exciting. And they're all part-time, they're all working in their areas of strength. And it's just been so great to grow the team uh, and put those systems in place. That was a real challenge for me. Systems is not my natural strength. Uh, organization, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but it's not, it doesn't come easily to me. Uh, sometimes it can appear from the outside that you, that you're organized. And I am organized around my knowledge, uh, but I'm not a very detailed system person. I'm a real big picture person. And so just really pushing through to create SOPs, systems, processes, um, get things in place for to set up for next year. 
um, on a personal level. I'm proud of like going through a, a breakup, uh, really healing, doing a lot of coaching, a lot of personal development. Uh, I coach, I get a coached every single week on my mindset and on my business. And uh, that has really helped me overcome a lot of challenges. Thank you for sharing everybody. Uh, number three, what are some things you are proud of doing? So we talked about what you're proud of, who you're proud of being. What are some things that you're really proud of doing? Uh, so for me, um, earlier this year in January, actually, I invested, I made the biggest investment that I've ever made in business. And I've made some pretty big investments in education. I've spent $25,000 on uh, a lifetime uh, business program. I've spent 17,000 on a platinum program. I've spent a lot of money on one-on-one -on -one coaching. This one was the highest I ever had. The, the program was a $30,000 a year program and uh, it's paid itself back already over and over again and it was just beyond what I could have imagined it was it was wild it was it was really cool uh just to to uh position myself with a whole lot of super successful smart people I felt like the absolute newbie at the bottom of the rung and a whole heap of people that are just way further along the journey with me what I the main thing I work um that I drew from that community is to really look after my people really look after them uh so I joined it mainly to hang out with those big picture thinkers or those leader thinkers and uh, for systems and a whole heap of skills that I knew I would develop. The biggest thing I got out of it was the importance of just really going above and beyond for your clients. Uh, and I now have my dream community. And if you're not part of it, please reach out uh, and I'll tell you about it because we would love to have you in it. It is the dream community of incredible, incredible women doing amazing things and so supportive, um, so smart. And it, it's just been like a, a dream come true. Um, number four, number four, what are some specific skills you developed? What are some specific skills you developed? I'd love it if you pop it in the chat box, uh, in the comments, sorry. What are some of the specific skills that you developed? Uh, I definitely developed my skill as a copywriter, um, writing a lot of copy um, this year, content. And uh, as a marketer, I developed my skills in Facebook ads and in uh, just general content. I developed as a presenter. I present multiple times a week and definitely can feel that I'm getting better, you know, long way to go <laughs> to mastery, um, but mastery is constant improvement. So definitely could feel um, my confidence improving. Uh, and I definitely improved when it came to leadership, uh, being able to step up as a leader, uh, train people, and then um, be able to pass the baton to other people. So for the first time ever, I went on holiday and Kat, who's probably here uh, with us live, she stepped in a few, quite a few times and ran. Uh, we have a mastermind session, master, we call it Minds on Fire. And we have that once a month and Kat stepped up when I was away. I usually go on holiday and don't really have a holiday, <laughs> uh, but I actually had a holiday and I didn't even take my laptop. So I'm really proud of that. <laughs> Um, number five, number five, question five, what are some things you learned? I love this question. What are some things you learned? Pop it in the comments. This is such a powerful question. It can take a little bit of reflection. Sorry, I keep bumping my necklace. I'm, I apologize if that's really annoying. Um, this can take a little bit of thought and reflection, but, um, some things that I've learned and I need to think about this more. I want to think about this more over the holidays, I really learned that how important it is to tell people about my vision and my mission. Uh, I feel it's my purpose to help women develop an authentic voice to really step up and shine in their purpose and the reason that they're on the planet and to develop their communication skills, writing and speaking. Uh, I, I really feel that um, that's where I'm called to is communication, how to effectively communicate your message so that the right people find you and you repel the wrong people. So you're actually being really bold in your messaging so that 
that you're a magnet to the people that you really, really want to work with um, and that you say no to everybody else. Uh, I've said no to people this year. I've been um, really strong in the, the people that I'm allowing into the community because it affects everybody's energy. And it certainly affects your energy if you're working with people that are not a good match, that aren't aligned, that don't respect you, value you and listen to your feedback and, um, and show up committed committed to themselves, taking full responsibility and being at the cause side of the equation, not at effect. So that's who I'm really speaking to in my content. And I've been attracting those kind of people. Uh, and I've really been able to uh, show my own voice. And I had some fear around really saying what I thought. Uh, and that's a journey for all of us, right? Like I, I've got a long way to go and truly not caring what people think, but that has been something that's really um, I've stepped into this year. Um, and I met an amazing man. <laughs> I started a new beautiful relationship with my dream guy. Like it's, it's just such a beautiful story of um not settling and letting go of something that was great in order to get something that was outstanding like like everything that I wanted I don't believe any of us have to settle in any area of our life um, especially who we partner with and for me to let go of a relationship that was really um that was hard to do because he ticked a lot of boxes but not every box and someone can be amazing without having to be perfect but they need to be perfect for you and this applies to business because who we are, have as our soulmate also applies to who we have as our um, same principles of making sure that they're aligned applies to our soulmate clients you know really making sure that we are spending time with people that get us that appreciate us that value us and um, not settling for anything less. <laughs> so it's been a big learning for me this year. All right, question six, how are we going team? Are you enjoying the process? Um, I hope that I'm just by sharing uh, this vulnerably, it's not always easy um, for me to talk about my personal life, but it's something that I'm really committed to doing more of. Um, I hope this is helping you to just give you some examples, get you thinking um, for when you go through and, and do this process yourself. Uh, by the way, if you have just joined us and you would like a copy of this worksheet where I've got all the prompts and everything, just put the word worksheet into the comments now and we'll get that to you. Uh, so now, question six, what are some things you have created? What are some things you created this year? I did a snapshot and I've got a calendar. Um, and if you haven't received it, I shared about it last session. Uh, just pop the word calendar if you want me to send it to you. It's basically a snapshot of your whole year. And I had a look at, at last year. Sorry, this year. I'm already in 23. Um, I had a look at this year and I realized how much I had actually achieved was like, wow, no wonder I felt like I was rather busy. I um, I ran 79 events for my members. Some of them were, you know, one hour, some of them were two hours, some of them were um, four weekends, but 17, I was like, is that actually, is that true? Did I actually do that? And I looked at all the dates. Yep. 79 member events. I, uh, I wrote 161 social media posts. I sent 173 value emails to my email newsletter. Uh, I ran 12 marketing events, like workshops for, for free. Uh, I, I shared 50 video Facebook videos in this community. Um, I launched two new mastermind programs and I ran 34 mastermind sessions. So that was a big year. I think it was one of my biggest year. And I'm not saying that to say it's all about the numbers and it's all about the quantity because it's not. It's better to do quality than quantity. But if you can do both, even better. <laughs> awesome. Um, but it's just really nice to look back at what you actually created, even if you didn't post it. You know, if you wrote a blog post, add up how many blog posts you did and be proud of wherever you're at. You know, it's taken me years to get to this point. So please, no comparison. And it's not about what I've achieved. It's about what you've achieved. But just think through the different, the posts, you know, whether it might be a fun activity for you to just sit and go through. I got my VA to just go through and, and count things for me. And just, just add up, you know, what you've done and just really feel proud of that. 
Question seven, how did you help others? Question seven, how did you help others? Isn't it just a buzz to help others? I love it. I love helping people. I love it so much. So I've really helped my clients, really helped my clients. Um, there's been a lot of successes in, in my clients' lives, one-on-one uh, -on -one and in the group. So I have one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. Uh, I've also really helped my wider community. So people that aren't clients, like you and people that are in my Facebook group, um, people that are on my email list, people that are following me on Instagram, YouTube. Um, outside of work, my life mission is to support and uplift and equip and encourage every person that I come across. So I don't just live this for my work. Uh, I live this when it comes to the waitress or the waiter at a restaurant acknowledging them, being grateful for them, for the service they provide, the person serving you at Coles. Uh, it took me a while to learn this. I remember I'd just be on my phone and it's like, this is a person serving me and packing my groceries. The person that's in the lift with you that just needs a smile. Um, and the person that you walk past on the street and just say hello. You know, I know that a lot of you do this. So really acknowledge yourself for the help that you've given others. Number eight. Where did you have the most fun in your business? Pop it in the, in the comments. Where did you have the most fun in your business? For me, the most fun <laughs> is shutting down my calendar for clients on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, stopping working Saturdays. And I go introvert on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I go in my cave. I don't see clients. I create, I get coached, I plan, I write, I do all sorts of things um, to support running my business. And then on Tuesday and Thursday and Wednesday nights, I come out of the cave and I present and I share and I coach clients. And uh, for me, that was super fun, just getting the balance. Sometimes we have to hit a threshold in how much face-to-face -face client time we have and make sure that we balance that with creation time, cave time. Number nine, final question. What are you most grateful for about the year? What are you most grateful for? Pop it in the comments. Even if you're watching the replay, I'd love to know your answers. For me, I am so grateful to my community of clients and friends and mentors. I could not be more grateful for the people who support me, no matter what, the people that leave me messages, the people that encourage me, the support. Um, business is too hard to do alone and it's not fun to do alone. I tried to do it alone. It doesn't work. It's not fun at all. So that's what I'm most grateful for. I hope this has been super helpful for you. Uh, I am back. Uh, I'm having a two and a half week break. I'm going to New Zealand tomorrow morning. Super excited. I haven't been for three years. So I'm going to go and see all my family and friends and I'm going to cry a lot and laugh a lot and eat, drink and be merry. And uh, I just want to wish you the most amazing Christmas, phenomenal holiday season and new year. And I just really pray that you, um, you feel the love and the joy and the peace that you desire and you deserve. And that you really take that time out to refresh, to recharge, to reflect, and to come back stronger in 2023. Thank you for your support in this community. It's been an absolute joy to serve you this year, to spend time with you, to hang out with you here. And uh, until we meet again, keep shining and keep sharing and keep showing up because the world needs you. The world needs you. You matter. You matter, my friends. May your coming year be amazingly prosperous and joyful and truly fulfilling. I look forward to seeing you in the new year. Big love. Bye for now.